spring sprung weeks ahead of schedule as global temperatures reached a record, stressing tea plants in both hemispheres. March was the 10th consecutive month of record high temperatures, overshooting the 1.5 degrees Celsius global target for the entire year. Temperatures during the past 12 months were 1.58 C above pre-industrial averages. The EU's Copernicus Climate Change Service recorded temperatures globally as 1.68 degrees C, that's 3 degrees Fahrenheit, hotter than historical averages last month. Spring arrived after the hottest winter on record in the U.S., According to NOAA, the U.S. National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, the global land and surface temperatures in March were 45.1 degrees Fahrenheit, that's 3.6 degrees above the 20th century average. February was 1.4 degrees C, which is 2.52 degrees F, above the 20th century average of 12.1 degrees C, and 53.8 degrees Fahrenheit. Copernicus Deputy Director Samantha Burgess told Bloomberg News that, quote, stopping further warming requires rapid reductions in greenhouse gas emissions. Policymakers and scientists warn that exceeding the 1.5 C limit could threaten life on the planet. Assam started the year bone dry, but the rains now arriving will revive the tea. In January, China experienced a cold wave that brought snow to many southern tea-growing regions. In Kenya, temperatures in the highlands east of the Rift Valley rose to 38 C in February. Forecasts are for higher heat stress in eastern Kenya and Tanzania through May. Kenya experienced a wet year in 2023. Dry weather in the southern hemisphere is attributed to El Nino. The journal Scientific Reports predicts a 90% chance that global average surface temperatures will reach record highs by the end of June, easing as the La Nina cycle begins in the second half of 2024. The World Meteorological Organization said that El Nino would, quote, push global temperatures into uncharted territory along with climate change, end quote. Temperatures are now unofficially thought to be the hottest in at least 100,000 years. Business Insight Extreme drought, a direct consequence of climate change, has become a recurring nightmare for tea plantations. It has struck with alarming frequency in recent years, leading to significant yield losses. A stark example of this is seen in China, where tea yields plummeted by a staggering 30% in 2023. One source of relief investigated by Chinese researchers is tea itself. Adding a concentrated mix of 100 milligrams of tea polyphenols per liter of water to soak roots under drought conditions promotes the closure of stomata, which greatly reduces water loss from the leaves. The polyphenols accumulate in the root system significantly increasing EGCG, ECG, and EGC levels that enhance the plant's drought resistance through multiple pathways, according to the study published in the Journal of Molecular Sciences. Qingming, the three-day festival honoring ancestors and marking the beginning of the tea harvest, drew large crowds in fair weather this week. The Tomb Sweeping Festival encouraged families to unite and pay tribute to their deceased kin between March 26th and April 17th. The Day of Remembrance is the 15th day after the spring equinox, which is April 5th. Families dressed in bright colors bring flowers and tidy up grave sites before enjoying the sun and snacks. Offerings typically include traditional food dishes, and the burning of joss sticks, incense paper, currency, and paper replicas of items such as mansions, cars, and luxury bags for their ancestors to use in the afterlife. Virtual memorials, a modern adaptation of traditional practices, gained significant popularity during the COVID-19 pandemic. 
Rinju, a virtual memorial platform created by Hubei programmer Wu Binyang to honor his late father, has amassed a user base of 650,000, with 85% of the registrations occurring between 2020 and 2023. Pre Qingming Teas, also known as Ming Queen uh, Teas, sell at a premium price. Long Jing Dragon Well is a benchmark. Various grades of Shifen Long Jing are currently advertised for between 825 and 1,025 for 250 grams. Tea harvested within Hangzhou's Westlake Scenic Area is generally pre-ordered and sold out long before retailers can offer it online. Teas grown in the Qian Tang sector this year were the first dragon well harvested in 2024. Other popular teas include a 500-gram pouch of Mingqian Anji Bai Cha that sells for $500 online, and a first pluck by Lo Chun green tea priced at $2 per gram. Yunnan is China's largest tea-producing province with an annual output of 500,000 metric tons of raw leaf grown on 1.2 million acres. Tea has been cultivated there since the Eastern Han Dynasty from AD 25 to 220. Ban Na, Simao, Lingkang, and Baoshan are the most productive regions. An estimated 54 million tea trees over 100 years old are growing in Yunnan's tea forest. Business Insight In 2023, the Yunnan government launched an online streaming sales platform. The live stream earned 17 million won during its first six months. According to live stream manager Duan Mingchun, each four-hour streaming session generates an average of 500,000 won. That's about 70,000 in U.S. dollars. Researchers at the University of Georgia report that 10 seconds of contact with black tea kills 99.9% of COVID-19 in saliva. Typical concentrations of commercially available green tea, mint medley, eucalyptus, mint, and raspberry zinger teas were nearly as lethal to the SARS-CoV-2 virus in vitro. Virologist Malak Aseli and co-author Juliana N. Morris at the University of Georgia Center for Food Safety in the College of Agriculture and Environmental Sciences published their findings in the January issue of the peer-reviewed journal Food and Environmental Virology. Curious about the widespread use of tea to treat respiratory ailments, Dr. Esley purchased five grocery store teas and brewed infusions at two concentrations. Four teas showed preventable effects ranging from 68 to 90 percent reduction of the virus at the lower drinkable concentration. She said the greatest preventative benefit was found immediately after mixing black tea with the live virus for 10 and 60 seconds. 10 seconds was sufficient at concentrations of 40 milligrams per milliliter. The drinkable teas were brewed for 10 minutes at 37 degrees Celsius. The tea for use as a gargle was brewed four times greater concentrations than the drinkable infusion. All five varieties reduced the virus by 99.9% within 10 seconds when administered as a gargle. The concentration of T polyphenols measured against infectivity, quote, showed a significant correlation in virus reduction, end quote, she said. According to Silly, the most potent effect was observed when the teas were introduced at the time of viral infection, suggesting a potential rapid at-home intervention such as tea drinking or gargling. Quote, This could significantly reduce the infectious SARS-CoV load in the oral cavity, potentially mitigating infection of the oral mucosa, she said. Quote, Inactivating SARS-CoV-2 in the mouth and the throat matters because that potentially reduces the introduction of the virus to the lower respiratory system, end quote, she said. 
Having something accessible, easily prepared, and suitable for all the family is the ideal. Clinical trials will be needed to demonstrate whether tea can benefit a patient ill with COVID-19, said Essilly, who adds that, quote, initial results are both promising and exciting for those looking to supplement medical care, end quote. Produced by Audavita Studios. Connect your voice to the world.